Hey guys, Rojo2 here. Uh, I got the Wheel Horse B80 here. I posted my reveal video for it yesterday. Um, I want to do, I said in that video that I was wanted to do a few more tweaks and I'm going to show you the tweaks that I've done since that video and I want to go over the whole thing because I didn't really go over it in the video and didn't really explain what I did and how I did it. So that's what this video is going to be and if you're just tuning in this is my uh, Wheel Horse B80 for the 2017 All Terrain Lawn Tractor Form Build Off Competition. Um, it ends Thursday the 30th and two weeks after that voting starts so uh, if you like the mower go uh, go vote for me once vo voting starts but uh, let's get into it. Alright so to start this off. Um, the first, the tweaks that I did were I uh, put this header wrap on. It uh, cleans it up a little bit better, and I did it back here on the exhaust back here. Um, I put a tip on it too, and I wrapped it and make it look a little bit more clean. Um, uh, third, I put this. Uh, the same tread plate that I have down here on the footrest I put up here to clean that hole up and um, actually I ran out of this uh, rubber tread plate so I'm going to be putting one over the shifter spot too that's the last upgrade that I'm going to be doing to this um, and I'm going to have that done tomorrow I'll post a picture so that way you guys know, is it, know it's done before the build off is done and uh, fourth I uh, uh, let me get the light on here. Uh, you can see that uh, it doesn't want to shift. All right, there you go. You can see this plate right here. Um, in the original wheel horse, uh, these are side shaft. As you can see down there, the belt and pulley. They uh, once you get in any type of deep water it sprays water everywhere like if if this belt guard was not here it sprays like a giant like 20 foot radius of water and you get soaked so um i put that on there to keep the water from coming up and get my crotch all soaked now the last upgrade that i did is i wanted to put a 5 8 belt on this you can uh let's get the light back up here you can see how deep this pulley is. Here, let me come down here. You can see how that deep that pulley is, and uh, the half inch belt slip in that pulley. I didn't have any issues with the way I had it set up before because I had a lot smaller pulley on the engine. Now, I had to change out my pulley on the motor because, come over here, this is the pulley that was on it. This is a six and a half inch and the V groove is not deep enough to handle a 5 8 belt. So the issue I was having with it is it will not disengage the belt. Now we got it a little bit smaller. It's a five and a half inch pulley under there and I'm going to pull this cover off and show you guys how that all works out. Um, now to go on an overview, this has started itself out as a solid piece of eighth inch aluminum and I uh, cut it out, bent it, and then, uh, well actually I just cut this flat piece out and then I marked this red zero two out and drilled those out individually. And then what I did was um, I cut a strip and welded it on. I cut it out for the tank and then I made this little bracket back here, under here. There's a, you pull out this pin, the spring pops off, and all you have to do is undo this bolt for this cover to come off. Now, just like the belt guard, my aluminum fuel cell started its life out as an eighth inch piece of aluminum. Now, I made a cardboard template I made the tank, I uh, spool gunned the whole thing, and I only had one leak and it was up up here around the uh, filler neck here. And uh, 
what I ended up having to do is I didn't I had my coworker cap it over where the leak was with TIG and I didn't want to do the whole thing with TIG because then I wouldn't be doing it but I like the way it turned out a lot better so I just had him put a cap over my uh, welds with the TIG to make it a little bit more clean um, just got a little uh, fitting down here in the bottom and we got some of this um, little extruded aluminum as the mount for the tank um, what we can go over next is my uh, flywheel cover once again solid piece of eighth inch aluminum and I marked out each and every one of these holes and drilled it pilot hole with 3 16 and stepped it all the way up to half inch and got that I liked how I painted the flywheel blue behind it to match the body this uh, exhaust go back on to the exhaust um, it was a stainless steel push bar for a Chevy GMC pickup truck I got off my boss and I started cutting and welding it's two and a one you see the header wrap that I put on there now but it comes down underneath a foot pan with a bolted flange to the muffler now this muffler was about three inches longer I ended up cutting it down on an angle down here I rerouted the inlet tube to on the side I cut open another tube on this side and welded in this bypass tube now what happened is see We'll zoom in for you. You can see that butterfly flap right there. And you can see the cable coming down to it. Now, I'm going to try and hold this camera steady for you. But it's in quiet mode right now. And you press that, the lever up on the dash, and it opens that butterfly flap so that way it bypasses so that way the exhaust gases bypass the muffling and it comes out to my new tip that I put on it and that's connected to this lever up here on a dash um, this is my choke cable this is my headlights this is my anti backfire solenoid shut off so it gets fuel my starting key and my throttle now I also took this uh, stainless steel and re made a dash for that I uh, wrapped everything in wire loom all the throttle cables everything just a stock 16 horsepower Vanguard V-twin it's technically a 14 horse but you take out the little bushings in the exhaust ports and Magically it turns into a 16 horse. That's all the difference and a little bit tweaking in the in the carburetor And it's a 16 the same thing with the 18 horsepower and the 20 horse So all you gotta do is take out the little the little bushings inside the exhaust ports and it magically jumps to horsepower Don't know how that's possible, but ask Briggs <laughs> We got the just little 3 8 Heim joints on the tie rods just painted them blue and painted the uh, little end rod ends black got the little light bar in there welded in and bolted in shut the hood just two by two eighth inch square tubing on the front end for the bumper just bolted down in there we got the rear bumper, two by two, just bolted back on the original upright for the seat support. The uh, tires are 24 by nine. Oh, I'm falling on the racing mower. Jeez, the tires are 24 by nine by 10 Super Swamper Vampires. The front tires are three quarter inch keyed hubs. You just gotta make sure that you grease them like 
every ride or else they lock up and it's a fun way to get home with a locked up tire. The rear tires or rear rims are off a scrambler, uh, Polaris scrambler and I have the two inch five by four and a half bolt pattern wheels, aluminum wheel spacers on there to uh, kick the back end out to try and match the front end. You can see the front end still a little bit wider. I think actually if um, I believe that one's the one. You can see how this hub is flush and on this side the hub is seized onto the axle a good three quarters of an inch so if I tried getting the hub original hub to come out on this side but it would not so if that was out on the end it would be even like this side um what else Ah, the lift. The front is not lifted any, but um, the back is. Let's see if we can. You can see I added four inches in on the high and low shifter, and then you can see my shifter gear selector in there. But this is an eighth inch plate, and what I did was I took the top mounting holes on a transmission. I uh, bolted them into the existing bottom holes, the old bottom holes for the transmission mount and made this plate long enough to accommodate for the bottom transmission mounts and I put this 2 by 8 inch uh, angle iron to brace it since it's sitting up, our, yeah, sitting up higher and I put the original top mounting bolts through the plate too to give it some extra rigidity and on the back you have you can see the original plate was right here I just made a basically a squared box and bolted it into the transmission and bolted it back up top um, the only other thing I had to do was the brakes try and get down in there all I did was get one of these um, uh, I don't even know what they're called they're basically a real long joiner nut and I threaded it on halfway onto the existing brake uh, rod and then I just put a 3 8 bolt in through the other side with a nut on it to let's get in there a nut on it to adjust it and that's all I had to do with the brakes. Um, the seat was solid mounted before. I put a just a seat off one of the Dynamarks I had. And then I have my aluminum battery box that I made. Cut into the fenders and have it sit down in there. Once again, that started out as, actually that was... 0.100 is what that was made out of but uh, let's uh, get that belt guard off and you can see what it looks like under there all right I'm gonna I'm a little bit low on battery so I undid everything beforehand and that's off now you can see the new difference in the pulleys get the other one It's a little bit bigger but you can see how the dish is a lot deeper on this one it's able for the belt to slip whenever the clutch is in take you off here you can see my little aluminum mount with a stainless bolt through it with a hole for the pin that mounts up right there but uh you can see my little uh, mount for my LED lights behind it. Um, I don't have them hooked up to a switch because I don't really want them to. Uh, more of a show type of thing whenever I, whenever I do decide I want them on, all I gotta do is hook them up to the battery and they're on. It's not really 
I don't really want to be riding around with them on or anything like that, so I did not wire them up to a switch. But you can see my little piece of aluminum that I cut out and screwed into the side of there to uh, keep the water from spraying up on my crotch. But uh, other than that, that's it. That should be, see the tank had to be pushed over to that side a little bit more to clear the belt. You can see the header wrapping that more. And last but not least, the paint on this. Uh, I haven't seen one personally, but I haven't seen a blue wheel horse yet. Uh, there, I guarantee you that someone out there has already done it, but that's a little bit odd to see a blue wheel horse. And I'm pretty sure I have not seen a camo pattern mower like this at all anywhere yet so technically this is the first blue camo lifted wheel horse if you want to say maybe but um other than that i had a couple people ask me it's just a matte uh satin blue uh spray bomb paint job and it's uh all these all the white and the black is matte black and matte white uh vinyl i bought two rolls uh one flat black one white and i sat here and cut each piece out individually uh used some tape and taped them on to try and figure out what i wanted to do and then once that was done i peeled each individually piece up so like this this white goes underneath this black so what i would do is i would leave the black and white over here taped on i would lift up one edge fold it peel off the backing stick it on put that piece on and then i would move to this black piece because it's under the white one and i did the whole thing that way and uh some people were asking me where do i get all my uh stickers from like this this is a vinyl sticker the same matte white vinyl and then the little white trash productions trailer is vinyl sticker and this whole uh espyville mutters and the all-terrain lawn tractor forum.com sticker and my uh backing plate for my seat i uh i have a 32 36 inch uh vinyl cutter so i make i can make all my own stickers and but like I said, all the all the camo pattern I did by hand. I cut them out individually and put them on. But um, so yeah, that's uh, the only other thing that I want to change on this is uh, because of taking this belt guard on and off. I keep on chipping up the paint right here on the footrest. I want to get some uh, door edge trim to put over that, so I quit chipping that. But other than me putting the door edge on that and me putting the uh, rubber tread plate over the shifter plate um, I wouldn't change anything with this and I'm probably not going to so um, that's just a in-depth view of the wheel horse everything I did to it um, hopefully you guys liked it because I sure love it uh, I like I said in my last video I don't have anywhere to test it yet in the woods but um i talked to my one buddy i think i can get on his property this saturday so i'm gonna have a video uploaded on sunday i know i can't i know i can't upload any more um to my forum build page after thursday but uh it'll be on my channel i'll post it on facebook so make sure you subscribe and uh, keep a lookout for that video because this thing's gonna be a monster in the woods. I have a uh, I have a name for it, but I'm gonna not release that until after I post the video of it in the woods. So uh, make sure you vote Red Zero Two, the uh, wheel horse mud mower. And uh, thank you guys. Have a wonderful day.